Niger Delta. Well, the minister is here with us. But just before all that, uh, I remember that there were some allegations which were made some time ago, which, yeah, was talked about, and then we'll get into it now. Well, now we're joined by Mr. Godsday Orubebe, who is the minister, Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Okay, let, let's, let's talk about this one. Let's start with this. Do you respond to it and... Uh, you know, went on a tour subsequently, but let's just get a background for those who may have missed out that part to understand why we'll focus on it. Let's take a look at this report. Right. Uh, I guess it will come in later. But uh, Dino Melai has spoken up about some, uh, is it 6.6 .6 billion naira? Uh, he says some fraud, uh, how did he even say, contract fraud. Well, thereafter, you spoke up about it, then you eventually took journalists to some areas. But tell us about that. How did this even come up in the first place? Well, I think first, uh, I would like to thank uh, Channels, AIT and NTA for the good job we are doing for the people of this country, particularly in promoting uh, democracy and all the media houses that have been involved in uh, projecting the activities of government, the views um, of the people of, of this country. And secondly, I will also want to say that uh, I appreciate the efforts of a lot of the NGOs uh, that are held uh, to talk on critical issues concerning government, about transparency, uh, about how government should be run, you know, in a country like Nigeria. But I also would like to quickly add that uh, there are also some leprous you know, hands that are involved in uh, the issues that we are talking about. I believe that when there is government, of course the idea of government is to see that the welfare of the people is uppermost in their hearts and uh, uh, they do those things that can put food on the table of the people uh, develop the area so that people can be happy. And on the other hand, you also need people uh, that should have critical views about government. Is government really doing the thing? And uh, unfortunately, you know, it was on Monday last week, I was going to Calabar for an official assignment when they called me that uh, one anti-corruption network group was addressing a press conference uh, about Niger Delta. And my quick reaction was that, well, I'm going for an assignment and that I was going to be back the following day. I would tell the side of uh, the ministry. First, today we have a president who believes that the Nigerian way of doing things must be the right way of doing things. We have a president who believes that there must be transformation. Nigeria must move to the next level. And for those of us that are working with, with him, we believe in his agenda, and that's why we're working with him. Okay, and so we him. cannot do anything yeah. contrary yeah. to the expectations of, of Mr. President. Okay, let's just now, play three that issues, So three you issues. just respond yeah. to it at the same yeah, time. Three the issues. is ready. Yeah. We'll just take it. So you just respond to it all together. Okay. So we don't go back to it. Let's take it now. Three projects are non-existent. You can see the three projects in... The Secretary-General of the Anti-Corruption Network, Mr. Dino Milaya, alleged spurious award of contracts in the Niger Delta by the Ministry with threats of filing legal action against the Minister of Finance and her Niger Delta counterpart. These allegations have drawn reactions from the Minister of Niger Delta, Mr. Godstay Orubebe, who described the allegations as political comments aimed at misleading the public. He said all the projects mentioned are not only existing, but verified by anyone who is genuinely interested in checking their authenticity. These are contractors that have worked hard for this ministry. And so in addressing the first issue we raised, the communities where these contracts are awarded are communities that are in existence. They have traditional rulers, they have chairmen, they have councils in these communities. The contracts are awarded to community companies that are verifiable. We have stated the amount that we have mobilized, and we have also stated the money we are owing these contractors. 
Also reacting to the allegations by the former lawmaker, the chairman of the House Committee on Niger Delta, Representative Waman Ogoriba, said he is not aware of any petition to his committee on projects in the region and advised the former lawmaker to desist from misleading the public with his unverified records. All right, and uh, just pointing out some of those matters in the court. But you talked about uh, some monies owing contractors. Could that have been where they got the six point six billion? No, well, I, I, I think it is important for me to start in this form. As a government and as a ministry, we totally support the idea of NGOs that are credible, NGOs that are doing the right thing. And look at what government is exactly doing. But we are talking about public funds. And so government must be held accountable in whatever they are doing. When I addressed the press conference, he talked about three issues. First, he said <coughs> contracts are awarded to new communities. Secondly, he said these contracts are not in existence. They are phantom contracts. They are fake contracts. And totally said, these are contracts that are overbloated, and we have even paid all the contractors. And I came out to say that in the first place, these contracts are awarded in three communities. All the three communities are in Brutu local government area of Delta states. These contracts, three contracts are awarded to three Three, three contractors, and the amounts are there. These contractors were mobilized. Now, let us take the first issue. He said these are fake contracts, and that was why I decided to go to the creeks with uh, 19 media houses, including channels, NTA, AIT, and all the newspapers you can think of in Nigeria. I took them to, to the site for them to have an on-the-spot assessment or what is exactly on the ground. And so we got there. First, these communities do exist. They are there. Secondly, the contracts are there. They saw when the contracts were awarded. We went through all the contracts, particularly the canal. We went through all the canal, what the contractors have done, and the area that is uh, remaining. Number three, he said we have paid all the, uh, all, all, all the sums that were with, uh, these contracts were awarded. The exact amount of the contracts is 6.06 .06 billion. So far, what the ministry has paid is just less than 1 billion. What the ministry has even paid to contractors is less than 1 billion. And the contractor that is doing the job at a place called Bolindoro, Bolindoro, we are owing that contractor, as I speak today, 600, over 600 million. In Oguva the canalization, we are owing the contractor over 280 million. And the other contractor that is doing the shoreline protection, we are owing him 350 million. Unfortunately, the 2012 budget provisions are not made for the payment of these contractors. And these contractors went to banks to collect money to do these jobs. I've held meetings with their bankers a number of times. You know, so it is not possible for a ministry or a minister to sit down in his office and just award contracts.